Welcome back to the Paints Creek Killings. We're about to explore the church for the first time, but before then, I just want to show you the notes. I've made some changes, just kind of cleaned some things up. I uh, added a bunch more tags, so like anything that has to do with the mansion, like all these passwords that I need, tagged with mansion, tag Stephen Moss, tag Trisha, Andrew, Scott. So I've got a bunch of tags going on, so when this gets bigger, hopefully it's easier to make sense of it. So like, for example, anything that mentions Scott. Okay, this one's Scott and Trisha. This one's Andrew and Scott. Should make things pretty nice. And I think it's helpful to go over kind of relevant notes before I begin to keep them fresh in my memory. So we're going into the church. And Andrew is the pastor at the church. And Scott is Andrew's adopted son. And apparently Andrew is always drunk and Scott is covering his workload all the time. So, good to keep that in mind. Alright, let's see what we find. Church will be closed. <laughs> for, for the... Oh my god, the spelling on this. Church will be closed for the funeral of Andrew Reed. Um, church will be open from 15 p.m.? What? This is a disaster. I think someone needs to hold a, funer a, a funeral for the English language, because it is dead. Now hold on, Andrew Reed. Andrew... Reed. That's not the kid, is it? The kid that went missing? Um... Yeah, so not too many things actually show up here. Yeah, the article on the kid is not here. I'm not sure what decides whether it shows up in this list or not. Handyman. Scott Brooks. Oh. So Scott was a handyman. Photography. Wait. Pastor Matthew Brooks. I guess there are multiple pastors, right? I don't know how churches work. But that or Andrew's not the pastor. There's probably multiple. Whoa. That is a tiny, tiny lock. Also, once again, already has some numbers entered. I wonder if that means something. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, six digit code. That should be marked. I don't have a tag for the church, so I should make one. I'll do that in a second. Six digit pad -a lock code for confessional box thing. Why is there a box in the confessional? Kind of odd. And we can add a new one here. Just go with church. Okay. Oh. There's another one. 763532. 
These are the same. Seven, six, five. That must mean something, right? They wouldn't have the same passcode, right? Three, five, three, two. What if I set this one to three, five, three, two? gotta mean something. I mean, I... <sighs> they would... Surely they wouldn't have the same password, but assuming they do, then does that mean the... 7, 6, and the 5 are correct, and it's just these three that are different? Ah, <sighs> I don't know. a loud noise for something that doesn't even make any light. I will stay at the cabin tonight. I don't need dinner, Scott. Looks like delicious jams. church basement. Ah. This might be Scott's room. April 6th, 1985. Father Matthew picked me up from the orphanage today. He said I will be staying with him from now, and I can call him Dad if that's okay with me. On Monday, he will bring me to sign something. He says that after the signing, my name is no more Scott, but Scott Brooks. I'm so glad I now have a home. Same year, May 3rd, Father Matthew brought me to the attic today. There are so many wooden toys, and he made them all himself. He asked me to choose one that I liked. I chose the toy plane. It looks so cool. He says he can teach me carpentry when I'm a bit older. I can't wait. June 6th. The older boys are always bullying me. They called me a bastard child and a weirdo. They said that's why my own parents didn't want me. What does bastard mean? Father Matthew, oh, June 23rd, Father Matthew says I should be patient, but they threw stones at me. Father Matthew cleaned my wounds. That's painful. Father Matthew told me to forgive and forget. He said they don't know what they've done. I like Father Matthew, but I hate the boys. 
July 12th. Trisha defended me today. The boys walked away when she said her dad is going to catch them and uh, and put them in jail. I want to be like Trisha's father. I want to be the next Charles Roberts. That way no one will bully me. September 15th. Derek is always there whenever Trisha invites me to play. He's five years older than me. He's like her bodyguard or something like that, and he's really good at drawing. He gave me one of his drawings today. He says he only gives drawings to friends. I wish I could draw like him. Maybe I can make a wooden toy car for his next birthday. Okay, Scott, why do you have this childhood journal from when you were just picked up at the orphanage, just sitting in your desk like that? Is this something you read often? Anyway. Derek. I think I've heard that name a couple times, but I don't know who they are. Always there whenever Trisha invites me to play. He's five years older than me. He's like her bodyguard or something. I think I should make a note of that. So, Derek. Was it two R's? Ah, uh, who cares? Actually, I care. Yeah, two R's. Oh, that's why I keep getting notes that have just a single dot. The period is actually what I use as my uh, hotkey for switching between these two scenes. So Derek is five years older than Scott. That probably doesn't matter. And is protective of Trisha. So let's add a label for Derek and let's tag Scott and Trisha. Packing day, moving out, meeting Trisha on the 17th. Ooh, that could be important. This one's a lot more recent. Sunday, February 18th, 1990. Mr. Peterson passed away at the age of 81. Everyone attended his funeral today. He was buried next to Mrs. Patter uh, Peterson. The population of Payne's Creek is decreasing. Old people are dying and young people aren't coming back after college. Will I stay in Payne's Creek till I'm old and die like Mr. Peterson? April 22nd. Trisha talks a lot to me recently. I feel comfortable whenever she's around. I can be myself in front of her. She makes me happy. May 14th. Father Matthew tells me that it's important to have goals in life. I wonder what life goal I should have. I wonder what Father Matthew's goal is. May 18th. It's been a few months since Derek got hired by Trisha's dad to be the mansion driver. Oh, driver. He gets to travel around the world now. I envy him. I want to work too, so that I can buy something nice for Trisha. Okay, I should note this. So, Derek is the mansion's driver. We'll tag Derek and Mansion. May 20th, there... <laughs> there is our secret rooms in the mansion? I can't believe it. I can't wait till Saturday to explore it with Trisha. Hmm. Where are they, though? I mean, I figure there's tons of secrets in the mansion, but... Who knows where they are?
Why is it so dark? Photo of previous pastor, Father Calvin. Photo of Father Matthew signing during an event. Final court appearance. Hmm? Choir practice for Sunday Mass, public back baptism. I just want to check something real quick. Oh, there's different years for the different journals for each person. Sorted by person, okay. Father Matthew. Matthew Brooks, right? So... That means... Andrew. Scott is Andrew, the pastor's adopted son. Cannot be correct. I don't know who Andrew is, but unless it's Andrew Matthew Brooks, I don't think so. So let me edit this. Let me just get rid of this part. I'm not exactly sure about the relation, but I do know that Andrew's always drunk and Scott covers his workload, apparently. Okay. So let's add a new note. Scott Brooks is father, pastor, I don't know, father Matthew Brooks, adopted son. And we'll add Matthew Brooks in here. And tag in Scott. Haunting me. So many locked things. Ooh. Ooh. Things. Matthew and Scott years ago. Ooh. I love keys. Turn the tools back to the storage room. Okay, so I've got the key to the storage room. I think I can remember that. I don't need to put it in my notes. Scott Brooks pleads not guilty to killing ex-mayor's wife, Vivian Roberts. Main murder suspect denies killing former employer. Scott Brooks, the adopted son of Father Matthew Brooks of Paines Creek Trinity Church, pleads not guilty in court yesterday. According to Scott, he met with Vivian at the woods, but went home after their meeting and did not step out of the cabin for days. When he left, Vivian was still alive. When asked why he met with Vivian, Scott's answer was that they met to discuss about personal stuff and it was only between him and her. Scott denied further questioning, stating only that he had nothing to do with Vivian's death. Whoever killed Vivian must have committed the crime after Scott left. As to why Scott was at his cabin for days after Vivian was killed, Scott explained that he did not even know that Vivian had been murdered. Staying in the cabin was something that he has always done to relieve himself of any stress. Scott is currently detained in county jail. No bail has been set for his release. Okay, this should be noted too. Four digit passcode to desk drawer in Father Matthew's room, I think. Feels like that's like his office. Church. Uh, Matthew Brooks. 
Oh, this should also be red. It's a to-do, right? Which that means this one should be red, too. something about the fact that there's numbers already, you know, there's default numbers. There's gotta be something about that that I can use. storage room. Slim Jim. Don't know what the hell a Slim Jim is, but that looks like something you would use to. Uh... Is that the thing you shove inside of a car's window to unlock it or something? Also known as a lockout tool. Yeah, I think that's for when you accidentally lock yourself out of your car. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine that doesn't work with modern cars, but I think it used to work with older cars. Not quite sure, but remember that locked car that was out there that had the documents and stuff. So if I could get in there, that would be very helpful. In fact, I should make a note of that right now. Use Slim Jim on car. I think the car was in front of the hotel, I think. Okay, well, I want to either go there or try to see if I can figure something out with these dang padlocks. Let me try some stuff with the padlocks. So we've got the four-digit one here, and then we have the two six-digit ones downstairs in the confessional. Now, I haven't found anything out, but I have been thinking, maybe we're not supposed to find, uh, like, a slip of paper that says the exact passcode, but maybe we're supposed to just think of, what do human beings set passcodes to? I guess with an asterisk, what do they set them to in video games? To birth dates, important dates, you know, they were married or something like that. So I was thinking, I have no idea about this one that's four digits, but this one's that are six digits downstairs. It could be two digits for the year, the month, and then the day, right? And on both padlocks downstairs, the first two digits are seven six. So I was thinking, maybe something, you know, maybe if I can find some piece of information that mentions Matthew and the year 76, then I can maybe find the rest of the passcode. You know, associate a month and a day with it. I looked around, though, and I can't find anything that goes back to 76. Even when Scott was adopted, it was much later than 76. So, I don't know. Anyway, before we do the car thing, I also realized I forgot to go in the creepy basement. Why does it say exit, though? That... That's 
creepy. Creepy basement's creepy. How can it be an exit if it's underground? I don't understand. Hmm. That is a weird place for a light switch. The heck? Alright, I think I'm gonna head to the car. Yeah, there we go. I just used the Slim Jim on this car that's right outside of the church next to the cemetery. I don't think there's a point, because I don't think there's anything in here. Oh. Even the glove box can be opened. Well, there's something in there. Who the hell knows where I'll find the key, though. Dang, no sun visor that the key might be in. I can't, like, pull the trunk open, can I? Is there a trunk pulling thing? I don't see one. Okay, let's <laughs> just leave that unlocked. And open. <laughs> and let's head to the other car. Here it is. Uh... Is that a bloody handprint? Holy shit. That's odd. Nineteen ninety seven, March thirteenth. To P. I. Steve Moss. Stephen Moss is the investigator that was rumored to have been hired. Ah! I came across your name through a close friend of mine. She highly recommended you, saying you are a person of integrity and a very reliable investigator. So I would like for you to investigate a case which happened in 1995 in a town, in a town called Payne's Creek. The murder of Vivian Roberts. I was there when it happened. The killer left her body in front of the mansion for everyone to see. A few days later, Scott was apprehended for being suspected as the killer. However, there wasn't enough evidence, and he was soon released. Eighteen months later, the police filed Vivian's case as unsolved. I try to forget everything, but can't. I simply want to know the truth. I've enclosed a copy of the threat letter that Vivian received the day she died. Hope it helps. For safety purposes, I would like to remain anonymous at this time. I'll give you the first paycheck, if you agree to my offer. When the case is solved, I will pass you the rest of the payment. The case deepens. So this was obviously Stephen Moss's car. And the bloody handprint suggests he died. Shit. I know what you did. Meet me by the well at midnight. You know which one. Come alone. The well. I saw a well somewhere that was boarded over. Where was it? Was it in the cemetery? Hmm. Private investigator. Steve Moss. New York. Don't think there's anything I can do with this information, right? Good 
gonna take a picture of that stuff just to remind me that it exists if I need to come back for it. The secret lies with her. Was that from the killer? Steve Moss's journal. Well, this should give me some good leads, right? Depending on how far they got in the investigation. This is 1997. The investigation progress is slow. I try to reach people, but many of them have left Payne's Creek, and those remaining are starting to move out. I found some evidence showing that things aren't what they seem. The media didn't have it right. I should interview some people who worked at the mansion. Matthew seems to be Scott's legal parent. Still can't talk to him yet. I'll have to visit St. Patrick's Orphanage tomorrow. It's a day's drive from here. I know Scott found something there. There's something not quite right with his background. Hmm? Scott found something there in the orphanage. So Scott went back to the orphanage, so Scott suspected something was up, right? Something not quite right with his background. I need to make notes of this before I forget all of it. Okay. So, Stephen Moss was the P.I. Investigator. Investigating... that's not spelled right, who cares? Investigating Vivian's death. Yeah, let's leave that as its own note. Um... Let's put a note here. For Scott was looking into something about his past. Found something at the orphanage. Something not quite right, according to Stephen Moss. Scott and Stephen Moss. Also, the killer. Um, I should make a new note for the killer. Killer. That's an assumption that it's the killer that sent that message, but... Assuming killer sent a message to Vivian the day she died, saying... I know what you did, or something like that. <laughs> Meet me at the well. Vivian, and let's add a new label for, I'll just say, killer. Man, look at all these notes. Oh, I can get rid of this one now. Vivian married Charles in 1971. After the marriage, she became the vice president of Robert's Mining Company. It went into a slump due to the mining accident, but her resilience to not give up rebuilt the company. She supported local businesses such as Paints Creek Community Hospital to revitalize the small village. Looks like she's publicly very active. Because of just Stational toxicosis, she was taken to the Paines Creek Community Hospital for an emergency operation in 1974. Trisha Roberts was born. Vivian was hospitalized for a few months. Ooh. Passcode to the security room in the mansion. 025241. 025241 Okay, we've 
we've got a lead at the mansion. So at this point, we have a lead at the mansion for the security room. And we also still have the key to Dorothy's place at... At, uh, what's the street? Black Pine Road, number 40. Hmm. I want to find that place. Number 40. The numbering system is all weird, so I have no idea where 40 could be. Let me try to find it. Ah, here we go. Number 40. That's not the right one. Wait. What? What? I'm confused. I must have been mistaken in my belief about what that key was for. What is that key for? Oh god. I know one key is for... Um... It's for home number 7. On... P Street. Uh, Pebble Lane. That's the one with, like, the closed front. And I thought the other key... Was for number 40, Dorothy's place. I mean, it wouldn't be for, like, this back here, right? I don't think I can even... No, I can't even use a key on this. There's no way to unlock it. Huh. Well, perhaps I need to go back to the locker and reread the note. Unless... What's this? I yeah, can't unlock it, whatever it is. Okay, well, let's head back to the mansion, then. I'm back in the mansion. I went back to the locker room, and there's no note in the locker room. So... I'm gonna have to, like, go back and watch the video for when I got... this key, because I... I'm seriously missing something. Anyway, here's the security room. So, passcode is... Where is it? 025241. Ah, nanny room, tea room, Trisha's room, beautiful, you just found the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Alright, well, I think it's a pretty good place to end this episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore much more of the mansion.